This podcast is the result of my passion for languages and for talking to people. I have conversations with language professionals who are willing to share their experience. We focus on their work, but also on how their love for languages has shaped their personal lives. I started my career as a researcher in terminology, but I found my passion for working directly with clients when I lived in the United States and started working as a language consultant for global companies like Sony, Apple, and Google. When I came back to Europe, I was introduced to the world of LSPs, where I had multiple roles, project manager, vendor manager, and terminologist. Now that I am fully dedicated to my own projects, I provide language services in English and Portuguese, mentoring and consulting for the localization industry, and of course, I'm also a podcaster. Find out more on LinkedIn or Instagram and get in touch if you'd like to explore how I can help you with your projects. I am Rita Prazeres Gonçalves, the language worker. This podcast is also available on YouTube. Hi, everybody. This is insane. I cannot believe this is happening. This is podcast royalty, our lady of podcasting in my... <laughs> this is in English, Anna Xavier, right? Because it's like in Portuguese, it sounds a little bit different. She's Portuguese. I'm Portuguese. But we're going to speak in English because I guess most of our audiences will be English speakers because Anna is actually in Texas. So this is the first time that I'm recording with someone who is in the States, And uh, the other time that I had an American person, she wasn't in in the States. She was in the UK, but now you're not American, but you are in the States. <laughs> you are my first States connection, right? Yes, <laughs> a lot of first exciting. times on this episode. I know, right? So that's that's the idea to always have something brand new. So like I said, she's a podcast podcast expert and I'm serious, <laughs> but I will... <laughs> allow Anna to tell you what this means in a short sentence because we're going to start from back back in the day while you were still in this side of the pond <laughs> but oh let's gosh. just hear what what I mean when I say a podcast ex expert <laughs> yeah so I help small uh, small entrepreneurs and professionals kind of use their podcast to improve their business and connect to their audience deeper so basically how you can use that almost as a social media tool, but better. Mm, it is better. <laughs> That's what it we is. think. <laughs> so yes. let's get started with Anna in Portugal. Did you even study here or what happened? When did you leave? Because I mean, you've been gone for a long time as far as I know, right? And not yeah. directly to the States. So you went somewhere first, at least another country, right? So what happened? Yes. So my podcast journey, oh, back in the day, it started in 2008 when I was uh, studying journalism and communications in University of Porto. And um, we actually didn't have a radio studio or radio system mm -hmm. in the building because like in Europe, you have an old building and you're probably sharing it with other people, other uh, kind of uh, faculties. And so we couldn't really have a PA system. And uh, so we had a podcast studio. So we learned all the skills of putting together, uh, you know, a mini, a mini kind of like documentary or pieces or whatever. Like these were shows, right? And so mm -hmm. we had a, an online newspaper and air, air quotes. So <laughs> it's 2008. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like the online things were very popular back yeah. then. The online radios, the online mm -hmm. like uh, newspapers. And so basically we would like do what, you know, you would get trained to do as a journalist, but you were doing it for the faculty newspaper. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was really funny because we were like, you know, learning how to interview and getting down to the bit of the story. And when people tell me today, oh, podcasting is so difficult. There's so much, so many moving pieces. I'm like, oh, honey, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, have you heard of RSS? Yeah. You probably don't, don't hear as much because you have a whole system built into it that you're just like I just have an RSS feed that's all I know anyway so um yeah that was like the baby inception of like me getting into it but then I finished uh journalism school and I had internships and then my mentor at the time I love that man I'm so thankful that he 
was one of those amazing people who really care for your self-development because mm -hmm. you said, Anna, I think you have too much energy to become a journalist. I think you should go into <laughs> like being a radio DJ or do voiceovers. Wow. I think you really should use all of your personality more into those fields. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it was just so funny because like until he said that, like it didn't click and I was like, oh my gosh, it makes so much sense. And so I uh, went back into my hometown. I did, um, I worked in the local radio station as a uh, radio uh, host mm -hmm. in the Because you're not show. from a super big, right, well-known Portuguese Yeah, it's in the city, countryside. Right? It's called Chavos, ah. which in, in English means keys. Um, That is beautiful. <laughs> yes. So uh, I went back and it was really funny because it was in the morning I was doing the news and this was kind of like a hybrid of like an internship and your first job. So mm -hmm. we had a lot of freedom to do a lot of stuff. And so they were amazing. They were like, oh, we have no afternoon show. Go and do it. And so Monday through Friday, like two to six, there wow. was me like That playing music. That is intense, and people. right? I know, I know. And at also at the same time, I was like, I was just 21. But, you know, I always carried myself in a very professional way. So I guess they were like believed. So that was awesome. And then my best friend goes, oh, I, I got accepted in these illustration uh, masters in London. Would you want to come with me? And we have like, you know, besties adventure time. So that's all we did. I was like, I looked for some sort of like, you know, a really quick radio course because it's the land of the bbc of course everyone wants to go there and like learn and I just bet. live there right <laughs> it's london it's epic and so uh basically i went there first month in. i was like oh my gosh i love this i want to stay did that course which to be honest i learned nothing because i was already doing the job so in a way it was like <laughs> what are you learning here but you know whatever i'm not a big risk taker but like when people nudge me i'm like okay sure let's go <laughs> Uh, <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? Um, and then stayed in London for almost five years. Um, I did a lot of online radio, uh, community radio. So um, basically, I partner up with a lot of people who were uh, actually journalists at the BBC. And so we did this like cultural magazine. Uh, of East London. So basically we would go out and do podcasting. So basically interview uh -huh. people, assemble all the things, and it would go online on a broadcast on that radio station, but also on SoundCloud. Uh, good old SoundCloud. And <laughs> and so had a lot of really cool projects. I worked in cafes and like all sorts of jobs. And so at some point worked in digital marketing in a nonprofit. And I really mm -hmm. enjoyed that like mission driven, like purpose driven work. Um, and I was in charge of a lot of the digital communications. So newsletter, um, you know, social media website, and because I'm very wow. techy, so this like, is all sure, old I'll for you. <laughs> What? This is all old for you. Old. News. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> whatever. Sure, I can do it. Um, and it was just so funny that I, you know, developed an interest in social media. And that's something that you can still see today uh, because then I met my husband. He was about to leave the U the UK to the US. And I was like, I'm actually done living in, in London. I kind of want something fresh and uh, moved here. I have some distant family here. Mm. Again, crazy story. Yeah, I meet a guy. He's like, within three months, I'm going to leave. Uh, and then I was like, you know what? Let's go. I have a family Yeah, my reunion. style. I, I hear you. <laughs> I totally hear you. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I'd rather, and I think this is a lesson for everyone listening, really. Like, um, you can't regret as much what you've done than the things you haven't done, right? Mm, like when you look sure. back and you're like, oh, I didn't do this, this, and this. And there's often you hear people say, oh, in their deathbed, people like really <laughs> talk about their regrets. <laughs> and right? so, you know, hey, worst case scenario, you've lived, you have a story to That's tell. That's why I started right? a podcast finally after thinking about it since 2014. <laughs> It was like oh. before I die and I'll cry about it. <laughs> yes. And and I always say that a podcast is your legacy, really. Um, so, I mean, what a better way to leave the world and have like this legacy of content. So mm -hmm. going back into my crazy life, quickly yes. wrapping this up. There you go, moved, to the States. Yeah, I moved to the States <laughs> and it was the whole cultural shock. I am a very like, you know, I, I, I am an extrovert, but so I... So you didn't feel the cultural shock when you went to London? as such, right? I don't think so because it was in my early 20s. So you kind of adapt more easily. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I moved <laughs> Now here- Now that you're was, much older. 
I yeah, love yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, so much older. I I moved to the US in my late 20s, which I felt like there was a difference. And there was a lot of ad adapting to, especially because Dallas, I moved to Dallas and Dallas is very family oriented. Mm. Um, the city's really big, so you drive everywhere. I hate driving. I was just telling Rita before we started recording how much I hate driving. I'm the opposite. And, <laughs> oh, gosh, I hate it. And so I, I'm like, I take public transport as much as I can. And we lived in a very walkable place and people were like, oh my gosh, you're getting the bus. And I'm like, these are cleaner than the ones in London. Trust me. Um, and there's barely anyone is amazing. But and, I know uh, how people in general feel about buses in the States. <laughs> yeah, right. Like it's definitely, they're like, what? It's their uh, last option, basically, I guess. Yes, exactly. At least in LA for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Uh, I mean, in the in Chicago and stuff, they're kind of mm. you know more. Yeah, like, New York, Chicago okay. is a bit different. Yeah, they're more yeah. urban cities, more like yes. the style that we have in Europe. I believe more dense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But here, people don't take it. But yeah, I felt like it was a big cultural shock moving here because it was like all about the family values and just like in London, it's just you know nobody really cares, and in here, like the very conservative in a lot of ways mm -hmm. uh, even though dallas is a very very diverse um metropolis like it still is one of those places that you're like oh wow like there's so much change and i couldn't work right away i had to work to apply for work authorizations and everything so mm -hmm. um it made my like entry in the marketplace a bit like later Mm -hmm. I mean, it was still within the year, but still you're kind of like, for someone who's like, I want to do things. So I volunteered and I was like, this is great. And then um, through a common friend, I had, a, uh, I got introduced to someone that worked in a, a company that was wanting to open a podcast department. And so they're wow. like, oh, we want to open a podcast department and uh, we're, we need people who know how to use uh, graphic design and, you know, who have the, uh, graphic design skills and, and can do a bunch of like, kind of like communication odd jobs and I was like yeah, that's me that's All me I can do involved. production <laughs> oh my gosh I'm like that's me um and I had the best time so basically we we took the department from just one studio three producers and maybe like three shows a week um to you know like 10 producers and like seven studios and god knows how many shows a week so when i left in january of 2020 um my grandma passed away and mm -hmm. i'm portuguese so basically both my husband and i are european and at the time this was like right before covid right mm -hmm. i thought you know what like i I want to be able to go home more frequently and i want to be in touch and, and clearly her passing was just like the us doesn't have a lot of vacation time and stuff and mm -hmm. you know i enjoyed what i did but there was no no room for me to grow from there and so i was like again kind of like <laughs> all right let's you know let's quit my job and like really know what do i want to do next i wasn't sure mm, right and uh, i launched the podcast space in january of 2020 and i was mm -hmm. like i want to go back down to the roots of do meaningful work and purposeful work. So basically, I wanted to support uh, small business owners who are impact driven. So who have a show that is either educational, or mm -hmm. who have, a, they have a business that is, you know, wanting to make the world a better place somehow. So supporting through supporting them through all the stages of the uh, inception of the, the show really aligning the content, the purpose, with what they want to achieve mm -hmm. and then um the whole step of it so basically um what is the structure that works for them because again podcasting takes time you it takes yes, a while for you to see results time, for sure <laughs> so i'm just right? wondering so you actually started the company as is right the podcast space mm -hmm. in 2020 and if you say it was pre-covid sort of thing so it was the beginning of uh because i was pregnant at that time so i know all the dates right yeah yeah <laughs> uh here was declared i guess in uh on uh, march 13th something like that i was yeah, already home at, the, at that time and so i mean what happened in this gap of time that you were obviously working tremendously to put a company together and get all the stuff going? And I've, I've had a lot of people look at your stuff for opinions <laughs> because it's like every time asks, someone asks me anything, I'm like, oh, go and see what Anna does. I mean, what else can I say? <laughs> Because <laughs> what I do is obviously very rudimentary and it's like it's coming from my possibilities and not what probably should be done or most people do what people can do, right? So what happened in this period of time where you were like preparing? Because of course you started the company in 2020 and then you launched the pods 
the podcast spaces podcast uh, in the beginning of 2023. So uh, 2023, yes. yes. So what happened here? How how was it? Because you had a lot of stuff to do that you wanted to do before that. Were you helping a lot of people before you actually launched your own podcast? So what happened in this time period of these two years? Well, haha, uh, excellent <laughs> question. Actually, I never got asked that. Um, oh. So, uh -huh, so <laughs> thank you for that. Um, so first. funny enough, <laughs> yeah, I, I because I know so much about branding and like brand identity and mm -hmm. all of that. Not so much about business. <laughs> I didn't know much. I was the first one in my family to be an entrepreneur. Same so here. I was like, I had, yep. yeah, oh, yeah, you have no roadmap here in the US. Everybody's like, yeah, so and so everybody's entrepreneurial. You breathe it in the air yes, and you suddenly have all the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> um, so navigating that has been definitely like a learning curve. Mm -hmm. um, I launched it as a podcast production agency in the beginning. So basically mm -hmm. like actually editing and helping, helping with the strategy and the marketing side, um, but like really helping them through every single step. So basically the client only recorded. Um, and so it took me less than a month to actually do all the paperwork uh, and launch the pub podcast space publicly. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like, you know, I was like, go, go, go. Um, I was just like, I'll just figure it out. Nothing is a big deal, you know, like everything can be amended. Um, and so it's I, true. it's true. Like people overthink and they make it like really big deal. I actually trended on LinkedIn when I launched the podcast space. Um, so again, kind of like unintentionally, but like, it just tells you how much excitement there is about like launching a company, the buzz, but at the same time, like just figure it out. Like it's your company, you can change things. So mm -hmm. I initially launched it and now I was like, okay, let me figure out like what I can do. And also COVID brought a lot of uh, constraints, right? Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of uncertainty. I gained a lot of production clients because people are home and like, oh, what do I do? I don't know True. what to do. Mm -hmm. At the same time, a lot of people were like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to invest. Mm -hmm. So fair. And uh, it's really funny that... So was uh, it people who had more traditional businesses that were a bit more reluctant? And was it people who were getting started? Not getting started. I don't know. If you, if you had a lot of American clients, like you said, they have this entrepreneurial thing down in a way that I don't think anybody else does as, as a group, as a nation, of course, certain people here, certain people there. But over there, it seems like everyone has some sort of experience. So do you feel like most of your clients at that time were they people who were launching their online businesses specifically and therefore they thought this was going to be a great idea or none of that? <laughs> no. So basically people who have, because I think launching a business, podcasting is the worst medium for discovery. So it's great for nurturing your current audience into- Listen to this woman, everybody. Right. Excuse me. <laughs> <clears throat> I pay attention now. All of this so far was kind of like a joke. Now it's serious business. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so podcast discovery is really difficult. So unless you get your podcast on YouTube, for instance, by the way, anyone should, um, it's really hard to get new listeners. And so basically it's great if you have an audience that maybe doesn't know as much uh, about you. And it's a great way to kind of help them understand how you're an expert uh, or network with decision makers. And so mm. it basically doesn't, you don't go onto a podcast app and go, hmm, what should I listen <laughs> to today? Anyone, sure. Yeah. Right. But on YouTube, you go, oh, who, I have a problem. Who has a solution, right? Mm. It's, it's a different user path. Okay. And basically everyone that came to me were, uh, people who already had an established business. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, most people think about like, I need a website, I need social media. Um, maybe they, they think, oh, I need an intro video for my website or my whatever's, but they don't say, oh, I want a podcast, but funny enough, <laughs> I, this is another like, okay, listen in listener or viewer, um, <laughs> Both. I approached every single client that I had worked in the previous two years. Um, mm -hmm. and I said, Hey, I launched my own thing. It was wonderful to, to work with you in the past as you were a guest or as you were whatever. Um, if you ever think about launching a podcast, it would, it would be my honor to work with you on, mm -hmm. on, on a show. And I got a ton of clients just by doing that. Also wow. because I actually nurtured those relationships through time. So I, and they had known you in this capacity anyway. Right. So they, they were right. used to your style and they already knew what you could bring to the table and all of that. It, the circumstance was different, but you were still the same. Right. So you right. carry your own, your own brand. Right. 
Exactly, exactly. And I launched and talk about brand just to t piggy off that. Um, I, when I launched the podcast space, sure, like I didn't launch the and uh, Xavier space, right? Like I mm -hmm. launched as a brand, but the communication I did was very authentic to me. So mm -hmm. basically, I would have no difficulty talking about anything about the brand because the brand was me, the values were the values I cherished, uh, the process was something that I was doing so far. So it just made sense for me. A lot of people overthink branding. Um, and if you're just starting, just be a small business owner. <laughs> like it's easier that way. Um, and so when I launched, I had all of these people that I was like, I already know your brand. Oh, I've heard about you. Um, and it was just so symbiotic. It was really funny because a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to do a podcast. I'm so glad you reached out. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yes. Um, <laughs> It sounds scary, but it's just the first five it emails is. that are scary. <laughs> Everything else is like, hey, and especially like, I feel like, you know, what is easy for me and I think is easier for everybody is when you're actually putting the, like the focus on the person mm -hmm. say, hey, so-and-so, I, I was so delighted to work with you on a specific project. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever wanted to approach, to approach this thing that I'm an expert on, I would love to be there to support you. Like right. that is such a, a wonderful way to reach out to someone, to be specific, to be heartfelt. And mm. then, you know, like it's not a cold, quote unquote, cold emailing anymore or cold outreach. Uh, and it just makes it easier, less, less awkward for you and less awkward for the person. Cause we all hate receiving those emails. There's not like blank statement that you're like, well, <laughs> I don't like it. Right. <laughs> So that's what I did. And uh, yeah, so many people who had already established business were like, actually, I have my social media, maybe I have blogs, but I want to take it the next step and really bring in the personality, bring in my mm -hmm. expertise. Um, or maybe they're like, I want to network with decision makers that I normally wouldn't be able to access. And so, or I want to create educational content because I'm spending so much time talking to my clients about these one mm -hmm. things, I just want to go ahead and reduce all of that time and just make sure that, you know, I'm using my time effectively. So sending them links to episodes instead of having to talk to them for 20 minutes. Right. Sounds way better. Okay. <laughs> and that's how sometimes wow. I do my podcast as well. So I was like, I talk about this all the time with my clients. I'm, I need to create a podcast episode. And so okay. it's my that time. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And they case. can listen whenever. <laughs> Right, that's right. Because did I answer your your question? Um, I think so. Sort of, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, okay. So then, I mean, you did all of that. So basically, you were busy because you already had clients. The business, oh, was the podcast, happening. yes, right. So then, yes. when is the moment that you're like, okay, this is it. Uh, this is the time I have to do it now because. Like you said, now, now all you have to do is to direct people to a specific episode if they need a specific type of information, right? So yes. I guess you had this in mind when you created the podcast and you created this specific type of content, meaning in your case, a podcast about podcasting. podcasting. <laughs> yes. So yes. Uh, so yeah, I have squirrel brain. So sometimes I'm like, worry, I think worry. that was something else, but I can't recall. <laughs> um, so what I did, I wanted to focus in the beginning was really do outreach, do very public facing stuff mm -hmm. and podcasting. If I wanted to do public facing stuff, I would be a guest, not have my show. But because I do enjoy social media and social media is such a cool way to connect. I mean, we connected on social media, right? Sure. So that's, that's one of the, the most effective things. And in the beginning, I knew that I didn't have the capacity to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I was just launching. So there was a lot of like the self-confidence that just wasn't there. I was mm -hmm. like, I knew my stuff, but at the same time, I was like, this isn't a priority in my business just yet with the goals that I have. Um, and so basically I was like, I will do a podcast some, at some point, but I was doing production. So I was like, I'm doing so much for other clients, you know, mm -hmm. thinking about, I wasn't just editing. I was looking at it from the content strategy standpoint. So how does this podcast position the client? Um, what can we take out of, uh, this episode in terms of social media content newsletter? all of these things. Right. And so I thought, okay, I have all of these things. I will do a podcast at some point, but I'm um, reaching out to, uh, you know, brands and do guest blogging or do uh, partnerships. And mm -hmm. I just, I was at some point, I just got into the thing of doing social media and all of that. And then I wanted to transition into online courses and consulting. Um, so 2021 was all about kind of making that like almost at the end of the year, doing that transition to it. And then in 2022 was really about pushing the, um, 
the like online and just consulting and kind of like baby steps because it's so interesting because uh everyone wants to as soon as possible pass production to someone else but when it's content strategy when it's consulting it's completely different and i don't work with big companies that have big mm. budgets so it's completely different the approach that i have to take so at the end of 2020 um two i was like okay i definitely want to do more speaking last year was really about like okay pushing myself to do more on quote unquote on site engagements and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, we got to do more of like these public speaking. And I did work with Ecamm and a few other um, podcast companies on their like, they put up some events and I was like, okay, I, I like this. And then that's <laughs> when I started thinking, okay, I definitely need to launch my own podcast because it just made sense at some point. I was like, okay, I'm, you know, social media isn't enough for me. And what I mean by that is just like, I don't like writing as much. And so I thought, well, I already have a newsletter. <laughs> I hear I don't you. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't like writing as much. I do have a newsletter and it just felt like, even though I'm really good at uh, looking at strategically at content, even for myself and think, okay, what are my content pillars? What do I need to talk about? Like, I was just getting a little bored of that. And when you're a neurodivergent, like that happens very frequently <laughs> where you're like attention span, you're like, ah, I'm bored of this. But again, you yep. need a resources. And I was like, okay, I normally always talk about, um, you know, a lot of my educational piece of the podcast space, which is a huge part of, of the company. Mm -hmm. Um, I help people through, you know, like paid work, but also like if they are just starting in their podcast journey, I want them to be able to have the tools. Um, that's why so much of my communication is very, very practical. Mm -hmm. um, and so, cause I feel like everyone has a good idea, but just because they don't have, you know, they're not a journalist or they don't, they don't have like a, an editor. It's a matter how am I gonna get this going somehow, right? Exactly. The ins and outs, the beginning of everything. <laughs> exactly. And so I thought, well, social media is not cutting it. I want to talk more in length. And so I wanted to also elevate my, my, online authority. And that's what I normally tell clients. You want to mm -hmm. be known as an authority, you know, even though I got, I went to conferences and I was getting recognized at conferences and I was like, oh my God, I'm just a regular person. But people were coming to me like, oh my God, you're an Xavier. And I, and why? Because they were seeing my videos and on, on social media and they were like, oh, I know who you are. Um, but I was like, I really wanted to. You were like a, a Dallas celebrity all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely not that. I was like, oh my God. Uh, well. So that, that was, you know, funny. Um, but it really cemented that idea that I was like, I really need to do this. And again, if you're like someone who is really confident and kind of like, you know, I feel like it really depends on the kind of personality you have. And I was doing mm -hmm. all of this for clients. So I felt, I know, I know the work it's going to take. I'm not going into it, not knowing how much it's exactly. going to take. So I was like, okay, I'm now feeling like I have the capacity. I'm not doing editing anymore for clients. I'm just doing content strategy. So it's freeing, it's freeing up my creative capacity to do mm -hmm. all of it. And so also there was two things. So the reason why I started my podcast is because I actually wanted to have control over every step of the process to be able to talk and do case studies of things mm -hmm. that worked and didn't. Because when I was doing work for clients, there was always parts of it that I wasn't, I wasn't scheduling stuff in the, in social media, or I wasn't talking to the client's uh, potential sponsor. And so there were a lot of parts of the process that I wanted to be able to talk about that I couldn't. So it's actually, I set my podcast to be, um, Almost your case like study, a, your universal exactly, case study. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, if I want to test things with minimal yeah. impact, um, you know, I know, I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was really interesting. Something that I definitely wanted to do. Um, and then I wanted to be able to have conversations. I booked three of my top 10 uh, dream guests this year. So that wow. was awesome. Yes. Uh, I was super, pr super proud. I was like, oh, yes. Like, again, that gave me a framework. Like, do you want to invite your dream guests? This is what you do. Uh, <laughs> you know, like I look at everything as content and uh, just just looking at it from the perspective of um, these podcasts is a lot more than just content. And this is what I t tell people all the time. You have to maximize this content that you're creating every single week because otherwise mm -hmm. you're just creating work for yourself. So, True. um <laughs> 
why do you want to do this? Every single time a client is like, I'm spending so much time on my podcast. My podcast isn't growing. And I'm like, what are the activities you're always focusing on? And there's like high impact and low impact activities. Mm -hmm. Most people focus on the low impact, which are just creating the content, spending hours editing, but never promoting the podcast properly or never like really covering the topics that they probably should. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like the first question I get I ask clients is like, have you asked, have you done your main Q and A's? Like the things that people come to you time and time again, people mm -hmm. are like, no. And I'm like, why were you doing a day in the life kind of episode? If you have all of these other things that could be doing search engine, you know, that could get people that are like looking on Google on your website. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is, and it's easy to do. And I'm like, always telling people. So I show and one of the comments that I get all the time is like, I'm inspired to do things because you're, you're, what you're doing the talk and walking the, the talk. The walk. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Talk, like talk, I'm, walk, I'm walk, saying, yeah. I'm telling people what to do, but I'm also doing it on my show. And that like really helps people see effectively how that could look. Mm -hmm. So you were already super comfortable in studios and everything like that, right? One day I'll probably do an episode. Oh, now they're inspiring me. Instead of being about the Q&A, I will do the, uh, the, a day in the life of... <laughs> <laughs> because I guess my podcast is a little bit different because it's usually the the, the emphasis is on the on the focus is on, on the guest and their history and all of that, right? And how they became a professional in the area, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. So I could do that. But... Uh, knowing what I did in order to create my so-called studio that I'm not using at the moment, <laughs> as you can see, it's, it's a long story, right? But it's there. Uh, but how was it with the technical, I mean, not going into details, but how did you feel? Was it the, the super quick thing for you to do? Was it complicated? Did you have help with that? Because you obviously had a lot of experience, but I my impression is that things change so fast in the sense of being easier. And this is why someone like me who has no um, idea can actually somehow, good or bad, put a podcast together, right? So that's not, obviously not how you would do it because you have other types of responsibilities when it comes to your to your public and you know your clients and all of that. But you are, you also have the knowledge and a long history of this knowledge. So what happened in that domain when you were like, okay, let's get started. What's the first things, the first steps that you take in order to get the ball rolling when you know what you're doing? Because <laughs> okay. about what you do when you don't know, <laughs> I know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, to me, it was really about, and, and I, I talk about this all the time, like the motto of my podcast is creating perfect content that moves you forward. Mm -hmm. And that was, that, that was the inception of, of the show because I wanted a practical show. But at the same time, I wanted to create a show that was, uh, you know, kind of elevating the experience that podcasters had while mm. positioning myself almost as their podcast bestie. And uh. yeah, so um, <laughs> a lot of things that I didn't do initially, like for instance, I when I launched, I thought, of course, about the content strategy. What's the purpose? What do I want to do with this? Mm -hmm. um, so you ask yourself the questions you ask everybody else. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But for for those who don't know those questions, you were self which questions are, yeah, exactly. Um, those are some, they're fairly easy. They're like, one, what is the mission of the podcast? Two, what is my capacity uh, to create content? Because if you can't, if you don't have the time to create um, weekly episodes, what's the point of doing them? Or if you uh, are someone who cannot plan ahead a lot, then you're going to be struggling with planning, right? So I have some episodes that I plan ahead of time and record with guests, um, others that I record week to week. Mm -hmm. And so uh, basically when looking at like when launching, you have to really figure out why you want to do this. Because um, if all you want is to talk to decision makers, you're not going to care that much about the audience, the listeners. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need to create everything, quote unquote, by the book. Mm -hmm. uh, so because I know a lot of people who made over $10,000 in uh, in deals um, within a week because they were just doing business with the person in front of them. Okay. The podcast was an excuse. Mm -hmm. So think about that. Um, again, also, I, I ask myself, where will I get stuck? And this is a great question for people. So... 
I told myself immediately, I am not. And tr again, when I say I was a podcast producer, which me meant people would come into the studio, I would set them up their cameras. I would monitor if we were doing live streams, I would monitor the um, the social media channels. I would like talk to the client and say, hey, we have a question from so and so. Um, switch cameras, uh, microphones, all the things, wow. the, all of this live. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, I, I was Miss Octopus here. Um, <laughs> All the tentacles, all the arms. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm not creating this for my peers. So what I would normally do, like, for instance, what I do right now, like, clear example, like, because I have my my sign for those watching us on the video format, um, my sign is way above my head. And even though I can have slide my camera up and down, like, I, you're ideally the height that you should have in between your head and the top of your screen is actually what Rita has, which oh. is about four fingers. That's because um, I was counting the centimeters. <laughs> Right exactly you're like, <laughs> <laughs> so like those are small details that like again i think that like i don't look at because i'm not doing a podcast about podcast production i'm doing a podcast about how to use a podcast effectively to mm -hmm. become a really useful tool of your business and how to connect deeper to your audience and that has nothing to do with having the best most beautiful setup sure it helps like again i love interior design so of course my background is going to reflect that mm -hmm. um but at the end of the day, I focus on the things that truly matter. If I have a rough cut, I'm like, it's fine. Uh, if I was creating this for my peers, of course, I would want to create the quote unquote perfect um, transitions and sick, you know, zooms and like transitions with the, like maybe a, you know, I don't know, an image or whatever. But like, I don't care for any of that, especially audio only. I, my podcast is video but audio only is my priority. And so, so much of it in the beginning was really asking myself, where do I want to put the emphasis and creating like, I don't know, the podcast that is, you know, created also at the same time is like, are you trying to create something that takes normally a team of five? on a weekly basis. And I, that's what most people don't realize. Like those Gary V, Steve Barlett, like they have people like the other day, there was a video of someone I keep talking NBC. about that, but the one woman show doesn't run the same way as the five yes. or six people who know, who specialize in something. So if you're just one person, which is obviously not your case also, but it is my case, right? So we, things have to be adapted or else when you said, where am I going to be stuck? Me, definitely technology, right? So I had to find a way that was as easy as possible so that I just, keep going and focus on everything else. It's yeah. not perfect. It will never be while it's still me. And I have no idea how it's going to evolve. And it doesn't really matter right now because it's working for the purpose that I want it to work. Exactly. And if it's like, normally I say, don't aim for perfect, aim for good enough. And good <laughs> enough is like having a really good quality, making sure like, for instance, before we started recording, I was like, okay, the light is too bright. I look like a ghost. So let me turn that down. But I didn't spend too much time. Yeah, yours looks I way better. Know. Is it? Uh, I <laughs> Why is this happening? <laughs> Why are things all right? <laughs> yeah, like I'm just, just sitting just at my works. regular desk. Sorry. <laughs> 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 but you know like it just takes time like again of course you don't want to be recording in a very dark place if your podcast is video but like the very basics like you have natural light or you have like decent light again people get wrapped up in their like oh this has to be high level because i'm a high level performer and my specific job mm -hmm. this is a different skill set yeah, so true. you know like this is just a tool to, and again if you don't have the capacity to do uh video do audio sometimes i do audio only episodes i had to do it i think twice since the beginning of the year because i was just i had too much work which is mm -hmm. always an excellent uh problem to have but yes, i was like what sure. is my commitment to my audience and that's what i did i in the episodes i talk about like remember this is a clear example of me honoring my commitment to you and releasing a podcast episode that is not video because I don't have the, because editing video takes longer than audio, another platform for you to upload content on blah, 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 blah. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so yes. I was like, okay, audio, it is like, I'm honoring my commitment, which is sharing knowledge. It, it's just in the audio format. So off we go. So again, like that is just a clear example of me honoring my commitment without burning out. Right. Cause again, at, at some point your podcast is, is it seasonal? Is it episodic? What is it? So I ask my, myself all of those questions, which are super important to ask yourself as a creator, because mm -hmm. again, consistency is about also 
honoring yourself in the fact that you're creating this project and you're honoring this, the goals you set in the beginning and you didn't burn out. Yes, for sure. It's really hard to keep up everything going every single week. I like fresh episodes, like I say. So <laughs> I usually do a lot of on the spot kind of thing, but it's also because it makes sense for me and as right. a person, right? I, I am as much as I can myself. I mean, I have no other choice anyway, but it's it's that way, right? It's like if you are as authentic as possible, then burning out <laughs> might not happen as quickly because, I mean, you're just human and you know you are and you know where kind of you, where your problems are most of the time. So that really helps for you to be humble and just look at things from a, a more realistic perspective. But before we go, because Anna has things to do, as in going to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, before we started recording, we were talking about teeth and going to the dentist. So <laughs> she said I should do an episode about that. So stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, if you want the uh, episodes about uh, the dentist, just comment teeth on these posts or whatever these episodes yeah, we'll, out. We'll somehow, I'll somehow make it happen. I do have a lot of stories. I told her I have fake teeth and all sorts of things. So that was the conversation before we started recording. So it was not about podcasts, but now it is. So to be serious again, see if I can. Uh, so people will come to you for all sorts of reasons, but you said before, and it's true because I've seen it, uh, you are very worried about education, right? So I guess the, the way that I see your company, I mean, for, for my perspective and my limited perspective, obviously, it's actually to look at your stuff exactly for that, right? For help somehow, or for tips or for, you know, that kind of help. So what is it there? available to people who need to learn from you. So I guess you have things that are already pre-prepared and other things that you offer in a live version, right? So before we go, let's talk about that. Sure. So I, uh, so the podcast space is not just charity, obviously, <laughs> this is a business. Um, so I use the content that is like equally educational and also a marketing tool, right? Um, but I normally work with, uh, the podcaster who is wanting to um, realign that so they've launched the podcast and the podcast mm -hmm. isn't growing or they're stuck or maybe they, it, the podcast is growing but they're really overwhelmed um, mm -hmm. so it's not the person who's just starting a podcast that you know I don't necessarily I have a ton of resources about that so mm -hmm. it's the podcast who's been doing the show for at least three to six months and uh, who's really struggling who's like I'm doing the show but like I'm not getting any clients or I don't know how to create content that will bring in the clients or mm -hmm. how do I make sure that the clients are listening to my show like I had two weeks ago someone who found me on a platform that I did a collaboration with she found out I have a that I had a podcast consumed binge through my content and then booked a sales call. And I was like, this is what I live for. Right. And so many other people come from my social media because mm -hmm. obviously I've been doing it for longer. Um, obviously I dedicate a lot of time, like just uh, created a podcast, uh, uh, just a post about like the Spotify for podcasters wrapped. So breaking down, like not only, not yeah, only check out that one. Oh, you have to. <laughs> of so, course I have like, to. <laughs> obviously. I never assume, but mm, just in case. Uh, but like, how do you look at the Spotify wrapped that gives you podcast data, like on a deeper level? How do you understand that data better? And so um, you may be a podcaster. Again, clear example of like, if you have that wrapped, it means that you've been podcasting for a while. Mm -hmm. So um, I create a lot of that content, but also I think about like, again, what's the purpose of this content piece? I'm not creating content for the sake of it. So mm -hmm. a lot of the people come, to, the podcasters come to me uh, because they're like, oh, I want practical. Because again, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, this is how you grow your podcast, but it's so specific to them mm -hmm. that it's not replica replicable. There you mm -hmm. go. Uh, and so I want people to really elevate their dream because in my mind, I'm like, okay, take all the free content so that you grow your podcast so that when you're ready and you have the money, you come and work with me, right? I had people who, who said, I've been wanting, waiting to work with you for two years. I've been either saving or following your advice. And now I'm in a position where I can pay. I'm like, great, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so all of my content is about content strategy, uh, becoming an online authority. And so I have the free content. I also have a few courses. So um, social media for podcasters, which obviously has to be something that I would always do because it's people overthink social media and podcasters 
primarily they're like, hey, a uh, new episode is out. Here's a very boring image that tells you nothing and doesn't make you excited <laughs> at all to listen. But there's so many ways. And I, if you come to my uh, social media, you will see every time how I'm promoting the episodes, I'm always promoting them slightly differently so I can inspire people. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and then I have actually a coaching system now that I just launched before the end of the year. Cause a lot of people are like, oh, 2024 is coming. So, um, it's a, a, a program called a pod party from, uh, overwhelm to, uh, success. So basically it's a roadmap to mm -hmm. really start enjoying the podcast. Cause so many people come to me and like, I lost the joy of podcasting and I'm like, no. No, let's take all of the overwhelm. Let's plan it better. And so, um, it's, it's been something that is so fun because I get to talk to podcasters that have beautiful ideas, amazing contexts, uh, for what they're creating and just like really kind of like taking the dust away and making the host shine as an authority. And it's just so awesome. So mm, yeah, sounds very good to me. So thank you so much. <laughs> The dentist awaits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I must go. All I'm thinking is teeth. Mm. Teeth. <laughs> yes. So am I now that we mentioned it. <laughs> but it was great to get to know you a bit better. I was dying to do this and we have connected over social media, I guess, Instagram a good couple. No, not a couple of months probably three or four months ago. I'm a, I've been a podcaster for nine months now. This this month, I feel you know, very... Congratulations. <laughs> That's awesome. And to celebrate that, I launched the second podcast, right? Right. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'll tell you in six months. <laughs> but thank you so much, Anna. I really wanted to talk to you. I really feel like, you know, the listeners and the viewers and everybody will really enjoy this episode, getting to know you and following some of your tips. And definitely, if you want more of an Xavier, just uh, she's all over social media. I guess Instagram is is uh, very good. Uh, there's very good stuff that you can find about Anna. And so I thank you very much and I'll see you very soon. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'll be at the podcast space waiting for those listeners to come through. Yes, for sure. Bye, genius. <laughs> Bye, genius. Bye, genius.